Well, smoke has returned to the sky, creating air quality alerts and breaking records. We also have another chance of severe weather on Wednesday, and then it gets hot next week. So another day, another air quality alert for eastern and southern Minnesota, thanks to smoke coming back in from uh, eastern Canada, this area of high pressure that was over us the last couple of days. Uh, winds moving clockwise, pushing back in some of that smoke. It's thicker in Wisconsin, in fact, uh, really bad. Uh, remember, we had a couple weeks ago, that's what they have been in Milwaukee and Chicago. You can even see it here on satellite imagery. Uh, so further west, it is a little bit better, but uh, not a whole lot. We do have uh, all these red areas, northeastern Minnesota and Twin Cities, including uh, parts of southeastern Minnesota, unhealthy for everybody and unhealthy for sensitive groups in particular as well. And this makes it 23 alerts now, according to the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, just for this year. The previous record was 21, set back in the awful summer of 2021. So we broke that. Average is just two or three alerts in a year. So we've been seeing 10 times the average. And of course, we still have much of summer to get through. Another oddity was the lack of severe weather up until this weekend, we finally saw some. Several tornado reports, in fact, a confirmed EF2 tornado near Monoman and uh, some other reports here across the state of some severe weather. And we've got another chance here on Wednesday, slight risk, level two out of five, right in the middle of the Twin Cities tomorrow, marginal risk all the way up to Brainerd and Duluth. Not really a tornado day, can't ever rule it out, but we're looking at primarily a wind and hail threat with storms that redevelop late in the afternoon and early evening hours on Wednesday. So this high pressure that's kind of swinging back in the smoke is moving east. That's allowing this southerly flow all the way from the Gulf. So we're gonna see dew points really start to fill in and increase over the next 12 to 24 hours. So the stage will be set here for Wednesday as we see some moisture moving back up into the uh, upper Midwest, including much of Minnesota, combined with a couple little disturbances moving through the atmosphere. So just enough stuff on Wednesday to create some isolated severe storms. We're not talking about a big outbreak, but for this season, it's something that worth talking about. Uh, upper level ridge uh, just to the west of us, the same heat bubble we've been seeing, but all these little X's, those are little ripples within that upper level flow. And that's all it takes to uh, help spawn some storms when we have enough heat and moisture. And the jet stream, something else that's been lacking in our neighborhood for much of the last several weeks is gonna be overhead tomorrow. That means we have shear, uh, winds changing direction and speed with height, which is essential for organizing storms and creating potential severe weather. So here's 5 p.m. tomorrow. We see some storms popping up right on top of the Twin Cities and then moving east across Wisconsin and uh, southeastern Minnesota. And again, it's those storms initially, we're gonna look for potentially some high wind gusts, large hail, and then maybe some thunderstorms again late Thursday. Severe threat looks less, but uh, at least some isolated thunder uh, lingering into Thursday. There are some differences in the models tomorrow between how much energy and instability we have. Our North American model, much more aggressive with the CAPE or available energy for storms compared to uh, the HRR wrap rapid update model, which is a little further south and east. And that means that the parameters uh, for significant tornado parameters, supercell parameters are also quite a bit different. Uh, again, the NAM is much more aggressive with some of these updraft tracks, uh, creating some of those stronger storms right from the Twin Cities uh, south and east compared to some of our other models. Rainfall may not be significant for most of us either. In fact, potentially a hole here in southwestern Minnesota with higher amounts in the northeastern Minnesota, which is also very dry. So they could use the rain also. But if you're looking for another widespread soaking, I don't think tomorrow will bring it. It's going to be more hit and miss, but also hit and miss severe weather. Uh, mid 80s is the next couple days. Muggy tomorrow still. And again, some isolated storms possible still late Thursday. And then we'll see a little drop in humidity for the weekend, but then things are warming up next week. We're going to be close to 90 here as we start to head into July by Sunday and Monday.